Hello and welcome to Tree Walker Talks, episode 61, BU. Well, this week was kind of up and downs, up and downs. There were some days where I didn't feel like doing anything and I kind of didn't. I stayed inside and messed around on the computer. Then there were other days, like yesterday, where I got out and actually did quite a bit of things. So it was a good day. Let me move the mic a little bit here. See if we can't get a little bit louder. Okay, hopefully that's better. Um, so yesterday I got up and got out and went to change the radiator hose on my pickup truck that I got a new hose for and found out there's another one leaking. So I decided not to try to fix that one yet because I'd be draining out the reservoir, possibly some of it from the radiator, and order the new one. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because the pretty sure I need it to be a little bit lower. I'm going to be draining out quite a bit. It's the Y pipe on mine. They're known to do this. It's only leaking when it's cold out and everything shrinks up. When it's warmer out, it's not leaking. So that was not a good completion to a, a task. But then I went up and got some things and went out, took care of all the animals. They were very happy. Um, so our lane chickens, the ones that are just, just mainly just for laying eggs, um, they are not laying eggs right now. It's that time of year. Quite a few of them have molted. Um, I think they might start laying eggs once they're done molting. We'll see. There are nine in that coop. And then next to them, we have the ducks, and they're doing great and eating their weight and feed. Um, that's three females, one male in that pen. And then we have the silkies. They're all, actually, quite a few of them laying eggs, which is great. How many are in there? I have no clue. I haven't looked. So, I mean, I've looked, but I haven't counted. Um, there are a couple extra roosters in there that need to be removed. Um, so then that takes us to the last pen that's up and running right now. And that has four buff Orpingtons in it. They should actually start laying here before too long. Uh, maybe another month at the most, I think. And it has four ducks. Um, I call them ducks now because they're getting bigger and I actually believe that they're going to be three females and one male. So we'll see. Originally, they were going to be scheduled to become food. But since they work out to be a good breeding set, we might just use those as breeders. So and the reason I think it's a male is because he's bigger than the other th uh, three. And he's kind of a butt. And if you've raised some ducks, you know they're butts. Um... So, we'll see how things keep going in there if we have to separate the buff Ormingtons. If we do, they will go in with the other layers, which there'll be room. Um, did get in, and the old goat pen started working more in there, jingling my little puppy. Um, I got the interior part for the ducks in that barn all set and ready to go, except for the water. Because I think I'm going to drill a hole so they actually have to stick their head through to get to the water. Um, try to keep it a little bit cleaner in the winter so it's not as muddy and mucky in the heated bucket. Um, but that's done. I still have to do the outside of the pen there. Um, I got the old bed, the raised bed, off from in there. That's where the goats had been sleeping. And the storage above taken off and moved up. And kind of set back up so there is going to be a little bit of storage up there but not much. Um, because I want the rabbit pens... High enough to where I don't have to worry about pretty much anything off the ground getting to them. But lower than what they are now so they're easier to get in and out of. And then that gives me room up above to run water lines. And I'm not sure if we're going to do double buckets or try like a tote maybe even up there to fill up higher up so that the water will work better. Now I'm just planning on having three cages in there currently. Two females and one male. Um, and we'll switch those into breeders. I am probably going to get new pens for the females because I want 30 by 36, so they have plenty of room to kit. And then the old pens that I have now that I'm not using will actually get set up kind of outside in an area so that those can be breed outs. So that when the babies get old enough that I want to separate them from their mom, they can go in there and finish growing out. Um, we do plan on the, the rabbits. We're a little big, a little fat, so they've been on a diet and they're slimming down, so hopefully breeding will be better here, and we're going to try to do that here within the next couple weeks probably, probably when we move them into the new area. Um, so that's done. Got LED lights, the wire ends on them, and they're ready to be hung out there, so we'll have lights above the rabbits, 
in the barn area and in the little entrance. And I'll show you all this once it gets done, take you out there and let you see it. It has been quite a bit of uh, work out there, and I did get a face full of goat poop yesterday because a board sprung up and sprayed me with it. But, you know, there's worse. It could have been wet. Um, but let's see. I think that's about it. We do have Swiss Shard is out there still going, and so is the kale, and the rabbits are munching off of that. Um, but I think that's about it on the Homestead update. So let's go ahead and jump into the main topic of the day, BU. So today, I want to chat about something that's been on my mind. Maybe even yours. It's the idea that you don't have to be perfect. Because guess what? Just being you is more than enough. In this world of picture-perfect social media posts and the constant pressure to keep it up, it's easy to feel like we're not enough. We look at our gardens, our homes, our lives, and we might think, why can't I make it look like that? You know, I see that on the TV. Why can't, if they can do it, why can't I? But here's a little secret I've learned while spending time with my plants. Nature doesn't strive for perfection. Every leaf, every flower is a unique, and that's what makes it beautiful. Think about it. Have you ever seen a perfectly symmetrical tree? A flawless flower. Nature is full of imperfections, and that's what gives it character. That's what makes it real. And guess what? The same goes for us. Let me share a quick story. Earlier this year, I was in my garden fussing over a patch where nothing seemed to grow just right. You probably saw it. I was just feeling pretty down about it. Then I took a step back and I saw the bigger picture. The rest of the garden was thriving. The birds enjoying the bird bath. The sun casting a warm glow. And I realized this imperfect patch was just part of a larger, beautiful scene. It hit me then. We're all a bit like that patch. Imperfect, but part of something bigger and beautiful. So how can we embrace our perfect imperfect selves well here's a few tips let's try to celebrate your uniqueness i'm pretty unique let me tell you like every leaf in the garden you're one of a kind embrace what makes you you that's your superpower whatever you do best just shine at it you can also be kind to yourself speak to yourself like you would a dear friend offer yourself the same compassion and understanding that you give others let go of comparisons. Your journey is yours alone. It's not a race. It's not a competition. Grow at your own pace, in your own beautiful way. And remember, those things you see on TV, well, they're not always truthful. You know, they cut out some of the bad things. Some don't, but a lot do. Last, let's find joy in the little things. Maybe it's a new bud in your garden, a bird singing outside your window, or just a good cup of coffee. Savor those moments and save them up. If you're having a bad day, bring that back to memory and just think, remember when I was sitting there on the back porch, drinking that cup of coffee, looking out, looking at all the beans growing, the praying mantis eating the bugs. It was just a perfect day. Savor those moments. Okay, as we wrap up today's episode, I want you to remember this. Being you, with all your quirks, dreams, and so-called flaws, is enough. More than enough. So take a moment today to appreciate yourself just as you are. Step into your garden, or if it's a little cold out, just out in your backyard. Or go for a walk in the park. Breathe in that fresh air and let nature remind you of beauty, of being real, of being you. Thank you for joining me on this journey of self-acceptance and growth. Keep nurturing your soul, keep growing, and remember, you are enough just as you are. And I like you. All right, stay alive out there and keep on surviving.